one more item in regards of the before we close the whole uh, session for module four and as such the whole session for the webinar so one of the areas that um, where everything kind of leads to something and everything uh, can be summarized in some index uh, one of the core parts uh, for the ecosystem collaborative development is uh, a, a separate effort that we are very much looking for uh, to pursue and push forward. Uh, it's an open standard for, uh, for growth declaration. So we're looking how to open standards can more. We work based on the open standard logic and thinking in everything that we do. And we know it resonates well, and we know people use a lot our uh, Creative Commons release knowledge uh, in extensive ways, even in areas where we have never visited and we have never been. And that's why we also wanted to do the whole uh, the, the, the deeper knowledge of ecosystem development into digitally scalable format. Um, but key part of making all of this work comes down to the standards and developing open standards together. So the key part of that is to, to understand what it is, have something uh, a, a, like a declaration to join where anyone can say, I'm on board with that. I support that. I will use that. I will start to work based on that. So that's the declaration. So an open standard uh, in general, what it means is a free and open standard that is immune from vendor capture at all uh, stages in its life cycle. So whatever to open standards is, so we can, anything that is a shared IP free, so under Creative Commons or, or open source, those can be uh, kind of check the box uh, from the vendor capture. Uh, the ongoing development, of course, as basis of open decision-making procedure, procedure available to all in, interested parties. So we have, uh, for example, in our innovation curriculum, anyone can come and comment and improve different things. We evaluate whether that's correct. We circulate that in our uh, uh, Facebook forums if needed uh, and so forth. And we would li like to get more participation for others to help. Uh, do, do this kind of like ecosystem forum at the global level. <clears throat> um, the standard has been published and the standard specification document is available freely. So, so those are as much we can put and have time and resources to put those we do. Um, permission to all to copy, distribute and use it freely. The best uh, say the furthest we have pushed that uh, so far uh, with including the volume and availabilities uh, innovation uh, entrepreneurship curriculum or then in a simpler form the startup development phases uh, documents just as an example that doesn't mean this is not limited to what we have done but we're just showing in examples there are no constraints or the reuse of the standard uh, standards that are publicly available, so the benefits are, uh, has various rights to use and associated with it, uh, developed through open and transparent processes that aim to draw the consensus from the stakeholders. So these are also for uh, the approaches, like key points to communicate with those collaborating in the local ecosystem to uh, ecosystem forum. To, to rely on this type of open standard thinking. Ensure the compatibility and interoperability between the stakeholders. That is important for the continued growth and evolution of various solutions utilizing the open standard. The economic outcome of free and open standard, which can be measured, is that it enables both collaboration and competition between suppliers of products based on the standards. So that's all of those things is what all of us want with helping to develop ecosystems. Again, separate from developing organizations or private businesses. But even those private businesses, they have elements, not their whole business, but they have 
huge amounts of elements that they can put under open standards. But they're not doing it because they're not thinking that nobody cares or that it's a separate effort for them to maintain something to be available for the world. So therefore, they say, ah, we don't do it. We'll just keep it in our archives. But if there's an operator who actively asks for these contributions, actively asks and product helps to productize those for others, then it starts to make sense. So what do open standards enable? So examples like translations to other languages, many variation styles, languages, design, video formats without losing the main structure. A uh, key example, the innovation entrepreneurship curriculum or the startup development phases. You see examples from our side. Everyone's voice is heard and there, there is a process and structure on how to implement. Improvements happen, uh, ecosystem forum, to establish that, having that in place, having the, the, the understanding about open standards related processes, anyone can contribute. You know, majority of the contributions we get, for example, in uh, our uh, how to build a startup booklet is fixing, you know, the, the, the language, like fixing like, oh, you should have here and here, and, and, and we have. That's people coming, they're openly available, people fixing and making improvements. Uh, in our curriculum, there's different languages being translated in the, the curriculums and so forth. No vendor log, we don't control. Uh, anyone can copy any of those files from us, create their own copy and do whatever they want with that, as long as they don't say that their modified version is Based on, that is done by us. They can say it's based on what we have created and explain what modifications they have done, uh, but they can do that. Shared API, so if there is no standards, then there is no standards for KPIs either. Uh, and, uh, and standards for KPIs will help bring the, the comparability and measurability. Ongoing development develops also without own effort, so, so that's the, the whole, whole point. So uh, it reduces effort to create something from those who use it and those who have it. It reduces the effort of improving and making changes to it, um, but it needs to be put uh, and available in that way. And then, it, of course, it's a framework to connect other things, so that's uh, if there wouldn't be standards in the world, then, then it would be a very uh, complicated world. And uh, there's a great video of World Without Standards around this. As a process, how does an open standard work? So there needs to be publicly available the current version, then learnings and data uh, proven improvement suggestions. So someone has knowledge, data, facts, statistics, whatever, to say here's an improvement or it's just plain wrong, like, you know, it's word is wrong written, <laughs> sentence doesn't make sense. So that kind of improvement, then someone to evaluate those collectively. If it's something uh, debatable, that, that it, it, it's not obvious, then voting if needed and having a logic how to vote. Then a new version published and uh, anyone can always make own versions so no need to be stuck with the standard uh, with one track so the software it calls the fork so if someone is using open source software they don't like the direction it's going they would like to do something else but you know, the standard doesn't accept it they just copy their own create a new standard from that if they can or want but if that it doesn't need to be part of the standard they just use it something else maybe they improve it uh, maybe it becomes a new thing they say hey we now made it it's no longer used where it was supposed to be used but it's now useful for this whole other thing because we changed it so much and it can be introduced as a new standard so a lot of different uh, different ways then to bring also structure around the ips and around the, the, the different things so the more it's used, the better it gets for everyone. Smaller effort by anyone 
one part in compared to doing it ourselves. It's more visible, uh, reducing the reinventing the wheel approach, collectively, collective credibility, measurability, trackability. So, in context of that uh, declaration of joining the, the uh, open standard movement that we're pushing as the open standard for growth. Uh, there can be compliance levels uh, for applications, processes, procedures, uh, services, policies, systems, support services, many of those things that we, we showed earlier. And this is not uh, open standard by startup commons. That's not what we're saying. We are pushing the open standard to, to hopefully have its own identity and own governance model at the global level. But what you can do is to drive that open standard thinking and development in your own ecosystems and local level. But uh, how we need to work together between global actors and local actors is to avoid making national standards or these types of standards that, that then become competitive instead of collaborative, like the example of the, the mobile phone networks. Uh, the, G, uh, the standard between uh, GSM and some other standards, uh, or, or the, the worst case without the, the electric outlets, uh, is the worst example that nobody's going to change, or so that we still like we have cars driving in different lanes. So we have opportunity to avoid that uh, if we work together and. Uh, and, and uh, to really help make a global open standard. So that's the declaration what we are pushing forward. But uh, we are just one of the contributors that really care and understand this topic importance. Uh, but we want others to join to that so that we can get global momentum for that and therefore the global benefits for everyone. And then everyone can choose how much they want to comply with that in what level and what parts uh in, in, in what the cases it's no no way restricting it's only an enabling uh effort and uh, <clears throat> and here's uh an example of we get sometimes question of well but there's a competition and then there's a collaboration between the ecosystems and, uh, and this is within the ecosystem and uh, between the ecosystems so we, we collected this uh, where innovation happens the most in the, the term co-competition, so merging the competition and cooperation. And, uh, and this was in one of our other presentations. So, uh, and the source here is, is, is highlighted. So this is just to share uh, for, for, this, for this question that we have got also earlier. So it's really to, to find the right combination of real demand coming from ecosystems around the world, data as the key resource of the digital revolution, um, of the digital economy development, technology as an enabler. To, it always, the technology always keeps moving forward. Now it's serverless, uh, it's APIs, but more so the API economy, blockchains, AI, 5G, you name it, the technologies, they will keep changing. There's always new technologies. So that's why it's important to understand the, the things that easily are put on the technology basket and then thought, well, I don't need to know about that, but not missing the understanding of what is the business functions or business models around those technologies that those technologies enable or what is the economic impacts or what are the other things, for example, that uh, we are now suffering because of the, uh, I would say, the Facebook effect. Uh, that it's not only the social network; it's everything that it does, and, and uh, it does, I think, still more good than bad. But some of those things that it can do bad can be really, really bad, and uh, and, and, and that's that's something that we just need to have things proper considerations in place at local and national levels. 
adoptions coming from different ecosystem needs and maturity levels and so forth and so forth. So these are all <coughs> part of the, the benefits of the of the standards. So really a global joint movement, open standards framework principles. So from isolation to openness, from silos to interoperability, from do it your own to collaborative development, from product to ecosystem users and output focused. Fully scalable regardless of the geographics and of business verticals. So these are all the, the types of things that really contribute for that frictionless ecosystem in the local level uh, and that directly contributes to startup commons vision to connect all the, the digitally connect uh, all the ecosystems within and between globally uh, to help scale innovation entrepreneurship wherever that is happening in any shape or form because these really are the, the tools that we need we think the world needs to solve the biggest challenges that we are we are facing is through innovation uh, but in a way that it's not centralized around a couple of uh, countries or big corporations only. <clears throat> so we have two tracks, bigger projects based on approach, wanting to lead or need to catch up with uh, fast with other ones. So, so from our side, we support uh, uh, this type of logic. It's majority of the work we have done so far, these ecosystem development projects. Uh, but what we want to start have want to support more going forward, and we are doing in form of this webinar as well, independently initiated. So support more of the iterative approach. So no need to wait for others or ask for big budgets or permissions, but having the knowledge, the tools, the ideas uh, available and strategies sustainable by design, how to approach and get things started and where to find the value that is justifying the further acceleration and more budgets. And, uh, and we, should, we can fall back or jump on the next year, depending on how the ecosystems develop and these are the ones we support. So in context of the, the, the standards we support, uh, we provide the coordination and contribution now and we are hoping that someone else will take over uh, where we can then be one of the contributors uh, and not need to push all of these different agendas too far ourselves but uh, we have made sure that we have the long-term sustainability not running on anyone any individual's money but the value that we create to be able to push this long term until others enough more join so we're doing this pretty much the same strategies as as we recommend others to do for their own sustainability of their ecosystem operators so to really uh, help uh, connect the community of other ecosystem developers operators so the types of things we focus specifically data infrastructures apis best practices application concept marketplace for these assets coordinating, contributing for standards, helping to create data monetization models and sharing global development learnings. And the key piece is the open standard data model. So when we think that a lot of the ecosystem development kind of aggregates around open standard, when we take the digital things, it even concentrates more around that open standard data model. So while we do many things, there's always like the core thing we will contribute the most and make sure it gets done right. And data model is one of the things. It's also a great starting point. So this is just, uh, we covered this already earlier, but wanted to connect here uh, that which part of the open standard, uh, new things that we are putting into table to continue the things that we have done so far. And the core piece on the digital side. And there's a, a separate canvas to, to use also for an exercise. Uh, 
uh, to build the open standards for data. And this is a, a tool not created by us, but a great tool that we have found. And the good thing, it's published uh, as a shared tool. Uh, and there's instructions also to, to support that. So these are one of the things that we'll put into our knowledge library uh, that will help to, to look at uh, open standards for data developments, both locally, nationally, and globally. And uh, here's an example of data modeling logic that uh, we, we have uh, put to communicate in context of this uh, strategy that we have the business vertical ecosystems and then we have the cross-cutting innovation data models. So these are the, like the geographical ecosystems cross-cutting with the vertical ones and then just indicating the types of uh, uh, data items that we can have. So the, all of these have people, they have events, they have organizations and so forth. Uh, but then in the industry, there, there is more of the data that is more industry specific while still relevant in the ecosystem context. So how to join the, the, the data, uh, not, not data, but the general open standard that is open standard for everything is to, to join uh, the declaration, sign that, that's how we are collecting in the identifying your own shareable assets, uh, whether it's data, application, knowledge, documents, whatever you feel as value, best practices to others, and we will help to promote and share those with the world. And uh, hopefully we'll get this model to, to grow a more collaborative effort where we are then one of the contributors for that, uh, specifically the standards part. So that is now the end of the module four.